Greetings. I'd like to further expand upon some of the topics I had talked about with CS MGTOW in my previous MGTOW Talks discussion. That is multiculturalism in particular and diversity. We covered a lot of ground, but I think we were somewhat remiss in covering certain aspects of some of that ground, such as multiculturalism, diversity, and in particular, two notions, that is forced diversity and freedom of association. So I'm going to take the opportunity in this video to talk about those particular topics at greater length and expand upon that. Let's first talk about the notion of diversity. I think most people are in agreement with me and those who have a similar worldview to mine that diversity is, of course, a good thing. There's nothing wrong with diversity. It makes for a pretty rainbow, and it's interesting. It's interesting to see the different things. I've traveled the world. I've lived in many different countries. I've lived in North America and Europe and Asia, and I've been to virtually every continent on the planet. I've seen all sorts of cultures and all sorts of diversity. I think some things I found rather appalling, some things I found rather fascinating, some things I found attractive, others less so. But I've seen my fair share of things during my life. I've been exposed to a lot of diversity, and I think this is a good thing. But the difference between embracing diversity and being appreciative of diversity and what traditionally the, the left, the far left, and their strange bedfellows, in particular today, uh, Muslims, in particular moderate Muslims, push is this idea of forced diversity. Diversity isn't enough. It's not enough that there exist in the world diverse cultures and diverse peoples and ethnicities. All of this must be forced upon people. It must be brought about artificially, most usually under uh, state coercion and or social pressure. It depends, or sometimes it's both, as I just mentioned. There is a profound difference between being appreciative of diversity and multiculturalism and the differences that exist amongst human beings and being forced to participate in this and having no choice in the matter, even if it's against your own personal wishes and even if it's not something you would prefer doing. For example, there are plenty of people who have simply have no desire to visit India or Laos or Thailand or Chile or whatever. Let them not do it. And of course, given the fact that they would have to travel and spend money, they don't have to do this. But when they're in their own countries and they receive the government edict of diversity must be without any justification other than it must be diverse, they feel a bit odd, I would, I would think. The reasons why there must be diversity are never particularly well clarified or defined. Those who peddle it and push it, that is, that we simply must be diverse for no other reason than being diverse, uh, really have rather nebulous ideas and motivations. In some cases, uh, in the case of Muslims, particularly moderate Muslims, it's simply to allow them to do whatever they want uh, to the exclusion of the majority of that society's participants' wishes and ignoring whatever conventional customs have grown up in that particular country that they insist on diversifying. Uh, as far as super far left for gender activists and feminists, it's so they can get away with their own little scheme or many schemes. So even though they never define it, these people who push for diversity in all costs are really doing so, as all everyone does, for their own personal ambitions and personal interests. They're not interested in diversity per se. And let me point this out, these people who are always talking about diversity for the sake of diversity with no reason or justification behind it, they push for it in order to cluster and clamor to each other, that is, those same people of the same community. That is, Muslims traditionally just hang out with other Muslims and don't talk to other people most of the time. Not exclusively, but most of the time. The same with gender activists and feminists and their ilk. And we see this time and again. When I was a young man in the United States in the mid-90s studying at university, I couldn't help but notice the natural segregation that people had imposed and practiced upon themselves. So here I was, wandering about the campus, and I would spy in the distance groups of black people. 
Then I would spy in the distance groups of Asians, and these Asians were further divided. The East Coast, we have primarily Chinese and Koreans, so that's what they were. We'd have the Chinese Americans, who would almost exclusively only hang out with Chinese Americans. The Korean Americans, who would almost only exclusively hang out with Korean Americans. The so-called FOBs, the fresh off the boat versions, that is, Chinese uh, immigrant students and Korean immigrant students who in turn would only associate with each other, but of course not with the Chinese Americans and Korean Americans respectively. We had diverse Latin American groups and in New York City at the time at least the primary groups were represented by Dominicans and Puerto Ricans and of course they would not really associate very much with each other either and uh, and so on and so forth. And so you had all these all this diversity um, people presumably who would push for diversity for the sake of diversity, and no one was really being diverse with each other. No, they were just hanging out with other people. And for the record, I found and continue to find this rather foolish and stupid. I have throughout my life had friends from all sorts of backgrounds, ethnicities, and whatever, and I continue to, to get to know people and become acquainted and indeed befriend people of diverse backgrounds. I don't care. Uh, the most important thing to me is a person's mind are his ideas sound? Do we get along on that level? And maybe we have some common interests. And other than that, I don't give a fuck where you come from and where your ancestors come from. But obviously, to the people who like to push diversity and talk about it, uh, this is actually far more of an issue. The people, the, the loudest people, the people who clamor loudest, are usually the ones that are often, most often found huddled in their own little ethnic or religious group, not associating with other people. And so we see it in the case of, say, the moderate Muslim community, people who don't really want to associate with people who are not also Muslims, or in this particular case, moderate Muslims. And you see it with the gender egalitarians, or the gender activists, or however they term themselves, and you see it with ethnic minorities. People seem to have the natural tendency to gravitate to those of their own kind, whatever that means, be it in terms of our religious ideas or ideology, or ethnicity, or even for that matter, or socioeconomic background. People do have this tendency, and people who insist on the notion of forced diversity for the sake of diversity are missing this, that human beings have this natural tendency, and you can, I don't know how it is today, I would assume it's very similar, but back in the day, and I'm assuming it's the same today, but you'll see on a university campus of a large American university, uh, people will usually, not always, not exclusively, but usually associate with those of similar background and similar beliefs. This is nothing new, and this can be observed basically everywhere uh, across the globe. And we, it is important to point out, once again, that the notion of diversity, for the sake of diversity, for no other reason, is really just a cover. It's a front for those who are themselves not particularly diverse and do not want to have diverse associations and relations with other people. They just want cover to do their own thing and ignore the general mo cultural mores and practices of whatever culture they happen to be in and deviate from. So that's an important thing to emphasize. Those who stress and push for diversity for the sake of diversity often do so, not exclusively, but often, in order to be able to practice and pursue their own agenda, ignoring other people not being diverse in an effort to continue their own practices that deviate from whatever current cultural mores and practices had existed in that respective culture and, is, and are external to their own culture. And so you have the one side. This is the one side. Diversity at all costs. You hear it from extreme leftists. You hear it from religious people, religious moderates in particular, particular of the, particularly of the Muslim bent, and you hear it from so-called ethnic minorities. And then you get the other side of the the coin, or the other side of the pole. Also people I do not agree with. The race realists, the ra various racial uh, nationalists, black race nationalists, white race nationalists, whatever they might be, I don't agree with these folks either. These guys like to commit the naturalistic fallacy. They say, well, they take my observation, or the observation we can make, that people tend to naturally gravitate to those of a similar background and ethnicity and say, because people naturally tend to do this, therefore it must be. All right, because this this is a natural phenomenon, everything should be based upon this natural phenomenon: policy, uh, relationships, romantic and sexual relationships, friendships, and just about everything else. 
white people shouldn't associate with anyone but white people, black people shouldn't associate with anyone but black people, and so on and so forth. And this is ludicrous to my mind. Not only is it a naturalistic fallacy, but anyone who believes in real diversity, that is organically developed and evolved diversity, people who do so based on free association, will not be in agreement with this. And I am not in agreement with this idea. I believe strongly in free association. That is to say, I accept the fact that people naturally gravitate to their own ethnicity, their own background, their own whatever, although I've never been one to do that myself, and maybe that's why I'm so at odds with the whole, but with both sides of this argument. But in the same token, people should have an absolute freedom of association. People should be able to romance and fuck whoever they want. They should be able to befriend whoever they want. They should be able to marry whoever they want, although I'm not endorsing marriage for obvious reasons. This freedom of association is a powerful uh, diff point of differentiation between myself and those who advocate similar views and those who would talk about racial purity and all sorts of nonsense such as that. That is, we social policy based on principles of segregation, where people aren't even allowed to associate with other people because, well, supposedly we're all naturally inclined, inclined to do X and therefore we can't do Y. This is absurd. Human beings since time immemorial have been uh, breaking the boundaries of what, whatever natural inclinations we might have. Of course, natural inclinations are always going to be prevalent and in all likelihood will ultimately prevail, but there are always going to be deviations uh, within the within the average, standard deviations, if you will. And to those people who belong to that group of, of deviating folks, they should be allowed to do so without any hindrance. And this is why I find myself not in agreement with these other the other extreme side that says no diversity, everything should just be oneness and monocultural. I think that people have a tendency and a preference to appreciate and support a kind of monoculture. And, and I admit, I'm very Eurocentric. I'm not American-centric, I'm not Asian-centric, I'm Eurocentric. And many of the values and cultural mores that I appreciate in Europe, I think, should remain in Europe. And I do think they should be the dominant ethos here. However, that doesn't mean I'm not amenable, amenable to other ideas and what have you. Simply, if those ideas are in constant in contrast, or in fact clash with uh, Eurocentric notions that have evolved over indeed millennia, um, we might have a problem. And this is, of course, the problem we have in, with the integration of Islamic culture, which is not democratic, which is in practice is extreme censorship, and is, is lar in largest measure un unscientific since evolution is, is almost universally rejected by, by both moderates and religious people, that it, this simply doesn't line up very well with a Eurocentric cultural worldview that is has been in, present in Europe for centuries and has a, a long and rich heritage. However, people should still have freedom of association. If people want to do X, if some, some German guy or some Dutch guy claims to have found Allah or what have you, let him go do it. There's, there shouldn't be any hindrance to doing so. And if people want to hang out and associate with other people, then let them. All the while noticing and constantly observing that, once again, the tendency to naturally associate with those who are quote-unquote similar to you tends to be the strongest one. That is, Germans of Turkish ethnicity and descent who grew up in Germany and speak fluent German still only tend to hang out with other Germans who are of Turkish ethnicity and etc. and so on and so forth. I've seen this across the globe, in Asian communities, in black communities, in Turkish communities, in Hispanic communities, everywhere. And I actually think this is a bad thing. I've never been one to do that. I don't hang out with people from my background, really, at all. Um, I don't really find them particularly appealing. And uh, I just like to get to know people on an individual basis. As I said the other day, I've had some fantastic public and private conversations with Clive, C.S. MGTOW. He's a, a guy of Nigerian origin, and I'm a guy of Eastern European origin. We couldn't be more different ethnically, and yet I find intellectually we have uh, far more in common, and of course in the terms of MGTOW, than I would have with anyone of a similar origin or, or vaguely similar origin as mine. 
So I find that ideas are most powerful, and these ideas, depending on how solid and rational and valid they are, form the building blocks of some of the best relationships I've had with human beings and best friendships I've had with human beings. Notice, interestingly enough, that this is the same case with Islam. Islam, one of the claims to fame of Islam is that once you enter into the religion, everyone is a, a brother or a sister. Now, I'm not going to spend the time debating the, the merits of the validity of the religion of Islam. This has been covered extensively by other people. Suffice to say, it's just another religion. But it's in that all-encompassing uh, nature, the idea that you know everyone can join and just be part of this one big thing, the inclusion, the inclusiveness that everyone feels appreciated. Um, this can be a powerful thing. It can have a powerful effect. But I am not necessarily one to dive into something if the ideas aren't particularly valid and if there's not particularly a great amount of well, evidence to support it. So ideas can be good or bad, but nevertheless, they're powerful in uniting people. And as for the other stuff, you know, uh, certain people hanging out with other people of similar skin color or, you know, Koreans hanging out with Koreans, you know, that's what people tend to do. I'm not particularly interested in that myself, but we need to accept that that is a natural human tendency. And the problem, going back to the original uh, notion of forced diversity, is when we try to force people to associate with other people, when they're not naturally inclined to do so, you get friction, you get, uh, you get negative reactions, and indeed, sometimes you get rebellion. You know, people don't choose what they are, but nevertheless, they have natural inborn tendencies. Even though when I was a young student, and of course much less aware of these things, and I was looking at my campus and seeing, why are the Koreans only talking to Koreans? As a matter of fact, I had a Korean friend at the time, a female friend, that had spent some time in Germany, and so we talked often, and she was a fob, that is, a fresh off the boat. This is before I knew any Korean or had lived in Korea, South Korea. And uh, she had to disassociate with myself because her, her own friends uh, had put pressure on her because I was, you know, I was a uh, Uyghur foreigner, not, not Korean, to talk, to talk with me. And so the friendship eventually dissolved over time. And she did apologize, but she felt the immense Confucianistic pressure on her. So this is a natural tendency of people, for better or worse. And so we cannot ignore that in trying to, trying to create policies of quote-unquote diversity for the sake of diversity, which is absurd in of itself. Why do we need diversity for the sake of diversity? What purpose does it serve? Diversity is a cool thing, but it should occur naturally, organically. It should be brought about in, on, under organic circumstances, not through government edicts or to make people uh, feel more accommodated or more comfortable in their own skin. Alternatively, and on the other side of the coin, we need absolute freedom of association. People, you should be able to fuck, talk, marry, whatever, to whoever you want to, even if you come from vastly different ethnic, racial, socioeconomic, or religious backgrounds. That should not be an issue. Now notice, interestingly enough, how those people who, once again, clamor for diversity, such as Muslims, uh, would insist, on the, in their own case, that they could only marry a fellow Muslim or only have a deep personal relationship uh, with a fellow Muslim. I mean, these people, this is my point, the people who clamor on and scream about diversity are the ones trying to create cover for themselves because they themselves are hostile, inimical, and indeed not open-minded to people from a different worldview or a different ethnic background. You don't know how many people I've spoken to who say, I would only marry a fellow Muslim. I would only be friends with a Muslim. I would only this or that. Uh, so this is just, this is all bullshit. The people who, who, who ask for this sort of thing are doing, asking for this sort of thing because they want cover for their own rather narrow-minded practices. And on, once again, on the other hand, we have the, uh, you know, the extreme race realists, the, the, the white nationalists, the black nationalists who don't believe in freedom of association. And because of the absurd notions of political correctness and censorship, and all of these people believe in the majority in censorship, Muslims in particular love censorship. We all know this. We saw, saw what happened in Charlie Hebdo. We saw what happened in, with the Danish cartoons, etc. These guys love censorship. And this is one of the reasons why Islam is not compatible with Eurocentric, modern democratic, however democratic it actually is, values. The 
you find yourself in the middle of ground. You're willing to acknowledge distinctions and differences between people and racial groups and genders or sex, that is, between men and women. You're willing to acknowledge that people have a natural tendency to associate with their quote-unquote own kind, all the while being a person, and in my own case, who doesn't really want to associate with anyone of my own kind in particular, unless he has good ideas and I think he's cool, uh, in the middle ground being called all, all, sorts, of, all sorts of things. Um, particularly, as I've mentioned many times, the friction and the, the aggression comes from people on the left and people pushing quote-unquote multiculturalism for the sake of it, simply for acknowledging that people have natural tendencies to do certain things. And as once again, I should point this out. This is very, very deceptive. In, in some sense, I do find the people pushing for diversity for the sake of diversity far worse than the other people because at least the, the race, nationalists, white, black, whatever they are, uh, are not pretending. Uh, they're not really pretending at anything. They are committing a naturalistic fallacy. That's true. But they're not pretending to push for something in order so they can only hang out with their own kind. Uh, they just want to hang out with their own kind and think no one else should. Okay. But when you get, uh, be them extreme leftists, uh, the feminists, whatever it is, the LGB community, LB LGBT community, or the Muslims who insist on diversity for the sake of diversity so they can shun and avoid people of other viewpoints, other ethnicities, other, other sexualities, etc. It's a bit absurd. It's just the cover. So I do long for the day when we can have a voice of reason, a voice that argues a kind of middle ground that I'm arguing for, and because I think it is the most reasonable approach, recognizing and acknowledging there are differences between people and people have natural inclinations and gravitate naturally to certain things, allowing at the same time for absolute freedom of association without any restriction, something that does not exist within the Muslim religion. We should acknowledge this and certainly doesn't exist within the strange communities of uh, the lesbian, gay, trans, blah, 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 or the extreme left-wing uh, feminist corner. Uh, these are guys who are just pushing for this so they can offer themselves cover and engage in their own narrow-minded practices. Long do I long for that day, but it's unlikely to arrive anytime soon. And you can expect more videos in the future from me talking about the notions of censorship and and these issues in addition to issues that specifically affect men as well as general scientific linguistic and knowledge based stuff as you know i like to be diverse and sometimes you need to talk about these things so let's have a reasonably reason minded and reason bound and driven discussion on these issues of diversity neither falling for the one pole which is a cover up so they can be narrow minded and exclusionary on their own part, on, on their own part, or the other side, which uh, believes na in committing naturalistic fallacy and thinks there should be little to no freedom of association. Until the next time, I wish you all well. Have a pleasant weekend, and may Woden watch over you. And a little tidbit of information: Woden, of course, is the same deity as Odin, or the German, German, High German Wotan. And uh, the root of the word originally goes back to the Proto-Indo-European Odenu which is uh, some means something to the effect of raging, mad, or inspired. Those of you who know German know the word, uh, the German word Wut, meaning rage or anger, and of course is directly related to the god Odin, the raging one. Everyone take care and enjoy your weekend, and I will see you guys in all likelihood soon. Uh, that is, if I'm still alive. Bye-bye.